Hello, and welcome to another tutorial video for CSCI 2824, Discrete Structures. In this video, we'll be going over another essential form of argument, strong induction. Strong induction stems from weak induction, so I recommend watching that video first to make sure you understand its concepts. Strong induction can be defined as follows. We want to show, show that some argument works for all of its base cases, assume it works for a range of values, and prove it holds for the first value outside of that range. We can further simplify this definition by breaking into three parts. First, we have the base cases. We note that in strong induction, there may be multiple, whereas in weak induction, there was only one. Just like in weak induction, these are the most simple parts. Next, we have the inductive hypothesis. We make an assumption that this equation that we're trying to prove holds for some range. A range will typically take on the form of something like 1 is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to k. That's our range of values. Finally, we have the inductive step. We want to make sure to invoke the inductive hypothesis, and we'll use that to prove it works for the first value outside range. We can further illuminate the concept of strong induction using dominoes. Suppose our base cases are that we can push over one, two, or three dominoes. We might make an inductive hypothesis claiming that we can push over any range of one to six dominoes. So we can push one is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to six dominoes. Finally, we'll use that inductive step to prove that we can push over seven dominoes, which is our first value outside six dominoes. Now, let's move on to an actual example problem. We want to show that every number n is greater than or equal to 2 can be written as a product of prime numbers. First, we need to work with our base cases. Our first base case is n equals 1. In this case, this can simply be written as 1, which is a prime number. So that works. Our second base case is n equals 2. 2 can be written as 2 times 1 which are both prime numbers. So that base case works too. Thus, we have proven both of our base cases. Next, we want to create an inductive hypothesis for some range of values. We will suppose there is some k such that two is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to k. This means that n can be written as a product of primes. Note again that we created a range of values here. Finally, we're going to go into the inductive step where we want to show that k plus 1 our first value outside the range can be written as a product of primes. In this inductive proof, we actually have two cases. Our first case is that k plus 1 is prime. In the case that k plus 1 is prime, we're actually done.
For example, we could take on the number five. We know that five can be written as five times one, and that works, so we'd be done. Our second case is that k plus one is not prime. What this means is that k plus one must have some smallest prime product. In the example above, the smallest prime product was one, and every number has some prime product. If k plus one has some prime product, then k plus one can be written as whatever that smallest prime product is, which we'll call p, times some other number, which we'll call t. Now, by intuition, t must be less than k. This is because if k plus 1 equals p times t, then in order for that equation to hold, t must be less than k. And if t is less than k, we can invoke our inductive hypothesis. If t is less than k, then t can be written as a product of primes. That's because if t is less than k, it falls in this range. And we assume that if it falls in this range, it can be written as a product of primes. So, if p is prime, and t is prime, and k plus 1 equals p times t, well, then we've shown that k plus 1 must be a product of primes. That means, by strong induction, we have proven that every number greater than or equal to 2 can be written as a product of prime numbers. Just to go over our steps again, we made sure to prove two base cases here. There might even be more than two base cases for some strong induction problems. We then made an induction hypothesis with a range of values. And then in the inductive step, we proved that the first value outside that range worked. And we made sure to invoke our inductive hypothesis here. Strong induction is an essential form of argument, and so it's a good idea to continue reviewing this until you really make sure you have it down. Thanks so much for watching, and good luck.